What's up Tube Tube? Welcome back to Loguido's Chop Shop. A lot of people have been asking for the Wells gearbox autopsy. Um, I have got here the Wells in question. Um, I, I gotta say a couple of things first before I pull this apart though. People who watched the video obviously would have seen it fail. Um, and you would have seen, I guess, you, when when you watched the video, you would have heard it make like a screechy noise and then stop. And then, at the end of the video, you would have seen me pull the trigger and, and yeet the end off of it. Um, what you wouldn't have seen is off camera, I had this. This was what I was running it with. Um, I had a couple of alligator clips here connected to a car battery and then I had a fuse in line just in case the motor had gone short and uh, so the fuse would blow and it wouldn't, uh, I don't know, catch fire or something. Um, so that's what I was running. I had my hand on this clip the whole time and as soon as I heard the motor change pitch I dropped that off the battery so it would stop because I knew something was going to fail here so I was very much <laughs> uh, holding on to this and ready to pull it off at a moment's notice. So when you heard the high pitch sound I mentioned it um, when I had a look it was the screw down the bottom here had worked its way loose so um the uh yeah so it had worked its way loose and the the um gear the pinion there had come out of mesh to the point where it was super whiny and and i mean it probably would have stripped off parts of teeth but it wasn't actually what brought it to the end. In fact, when I picked up at the end of that video and, and, and finished it off, you'll notice that it did fire for a good five seconds um, before the before the front end left. And that was because I just tightened the screw back up. So um, the pinion gear would no doubt have some wear uh, from from that, but it wasn't I don't think it was actually a failure of the pinion gear because the thing was still running afterwards and in fact it would still run now uh, if <laughs> if there were anything to run <laughs> inside there. Um, I'm not going to bother running it but it yeah so let's take a look here we've got the M120 spring which is what brought it to an end it's fine it's sitting there um, Got the cylinder head here. There is a piece of <laughs> there's a piece of the um, tappet plate here that got cleaved. Uh, this tappet plate was still operating at, at the end. It was still going. So so it uh, it was basically the piston shooting out of the barrel or out of the cylinder, I should say, that uh, took that out. Um, the teeth itself on the on that piston are actually still in good nick. There's no problems there. Um, there's a lot of a lot of grease and and I didn't <laughs> cylinder just comes out. I didn't add any grease to this. This is um, that's just how it came. Um, the grease has distributed itself around the gearbox naturally. Uh, you may notice on the back of this cylinder head there, there is no uh, rubber. Despite me having re-glued the rubber on after the first video, um, it's gone. I don't know where it went. Um, when the when the front end of the gearbox shot off, uh, I imagine it got sent across my workshop somewhere. I'll probably find it like 
you know, month's time or something, and I'll be like, oh, that's where that went. But um, I don't think we're going to find anything super exciting inside this gearbox, but um, people wanted to see it, so nonetheless, I will, I will show it to you. Um, I'm going to start by pulling the motor out, and we will no doubt see a bit of a uh, bit of wear on that pinion gear but i don't think it'll be like the end game this, uh, this door on the bottom the door on the bottom of this grip is uh, both a gift and a curse it's like it's good that it's quick to quick to open, but it gets it's a bit of a pain. It gets in the way when you're trying to pull the motor out. There we go. Uh, it's also worth mentioning this isn't uh, necessarily a stock wells uh, motor. I think someone pointed out this might be a, a JG motor. I don't I don't know what motor this was. This was just a random motor that was in the bag. Yeah, you can see some wear on it. Let's let's get some zoom. Alright, so you can see there is some wear on the teeth of this. Uh, I don't think that, again, I don't think that's the end game. I don't think that would uh, end it. There's a lot of grease distributed around the place and that's probably a good thing for wells. Um, because I didn't add any grease to this box, it was just the factory grease. So... And you can see there is, like, you can see there's some wear on the tips there. And that would have been from where it came out of contact as the, as the screw wore down. But the teeth... Whilst I probably wouldn't put that back in, given the chance, I'd just swap it out with a new one. Um, that certainly wouldn't have stopped anything from working. All right, let's get this apart now. All right, I've uh, just taken the grip off there, and uh, I guess I'll uh, get the spring retainer out. Can I just go forward? I'll just go forward. There we go. Spring retainer out of there. Let's see. Get all these screws undone. Just, I might just actually zoom in a little bit closer to show you these bushes, because that's there's some interesting wear in these bushes as well. All right, just looking at these bushes, um, I don't know if you can see, but there is quite a bit of play in the in the inside and the bush itself in fact the bush is spinning in the shell and the bevel gear has got quite a bit of play more play than I'd like to see the um, spur and the sector definitely nowhere near as bad, but given that this is the one that's spinning fast, and this is where you expect to see the wear, this is the one that's going to fail. So when your gear strips out, your bevel gear, the, the teeth that engage the bevel gear to the sector, when they strip out, it won't be because the teeth on the gearbox or the teeth on the bevel gear were not strong enough. It will be because the shaft has moved far enough that the gears have come out of mesh. Alright, so you can see in here there's a... Um, there's a shim 
it's come off. Now I'm just going to wipe some of this grease. Someone someone mentioned in one of the comments that they thought that the the delay chip had melted or something, but it was actually just a whole bunch of grease on that chip. Um, it does have, you know, there are signs of having a little bit of a thrashing, but um, nothing too major there. Let's look at this bevel. There's definitely uh, signs of wear around the edge from where this motor would have just slipped out of mesh. I think it would have, as it was slowly backing that screw out. And that's not a fault of the gear. Um, if anything, these gears have held up uh, quite solidly. Um, I cannot fault the gear set. The, uh, the teeth here on this bevel are quite solid and still in place and they would remain in place um, until these bushes wear out basically. Once these bushes wear out and this starts to move, particularly this bush. So this one up here, the top one, it was a bit worn and so we were getting a bit of wobble this way which would start to put some excess wear on these teeth. But if this bush down here, let's get some of these shims out, I mean they're not doing anything anymore are they? Um, if that bush down the bottom there, when that goes, and this, uh, sorry, this shaft here starts to move, when that starts to move, it brings these teeth out of mesh, and then these ones are going to go. Um, so, a little bit of wear, again, not because of anything that the gear was doing wrong, but more to do with the screw um, in the base plate. Tappet plate, again, tappet plate's in great condition except for the fact that the front end's missing. That's because the piston went through it. This spring was the one I replaced, it's still going good. Put that aside. Sector gear's fine. This uh, this delay chip, I don't know, could probably could probably go away to be honest, but um, seems fine. Everything in this gearbox um, could live again, realistically, and there's nothing majorly wrong inside here uh, and that's kind of what I suspected with the exception of um, this screw backing out even though I did I did put Loctite on it uh, you might be able to see I don't know if it's in focus you might be able to see some of the blue uh, I did put blue Loctite on it but this thing got so hot under load that uh, heat sort of um, stops Loctite from working so yeah it would have overheated the Loctite and then the Loctite would have given up uh, the piston and the switch box there's no problem there yeah all in all um, everything in this gearbox even the stuff that I replaced okay so this spring here I replaced in the second video um, that's a pretty common failure, but uh, replace it with this one, and it's you know it's still it's still kicking. Um, some of them fatigue quicker than others, so um, that's not really a deal breaker. And the piston, I did replace the piston um, with another piston, and I think that was a failure because of this. And that was this, uh, the rubber coming off of this. I think what actually happened, you can see there's a lip here. And I think what happened is when the rubber came off, it actually got stuck to this piston head. And then it would have come down and bottomed out there. Because it was about 
two millimeters thick so it would have bottomed out with about two millimeters that would have set this piston in the cylinder let me let me put it in the actual um, gearbox for you so that's where it's supposed to sit I don't know if you can see that that's where it should sit for good engagement there you go there's good engagement now if that was sitting back a couple of millimeters like that let me try and get some better lighting in here for you sorry guys all right so when the piston is sitting how it should be it sits there and that's where your tooth comes in and engages no problems now if the rubber had forced it back a couple of millimeters that's where it would have been sitting and of course what happens then um, now maybe it was back a little bit further about there we get that tooth just hitting there so instead of this tooth coming and picking up and engaging with all the other teeth in the rack I think what's happened is the rubbers forced the piston to stay back a bit and this sector's come around and hit the tooth bang on like that uh, and so instead of engaging into the teeth it's just hit it if you look at it it actually split on these last two it split right there and smashed these last two into to the body of the piston so that um, makes sense with what I think would have happened if this tooth has come around and then just impacted the top of that tooth and just smash that smash that piston up that way and broke those teeth off that's what would have gone wrong um, this this could live again provided it was inside a, a, another gearbox shell um, let's have a look last piece here I haven't really had a look at the cylinder head much and this to be honest I think this is one of the biggest failures of the whole gearbox because this is the the rubber falling off this cylinder head is what caused the piston to to get broken the piston didn't break because it was too weak it was broken because it got pushed out of alignment by the rubber which is now again missing so clearly um, gluing this rubber onto the back of this cylinder head is, is not an appropriate it's not optimal uh, it's not an optimal way to get that rubber to stay there um, the other thing I want to look at is this nozzle because uh, There's quite a bit of, I guess, wear in that cylinder head there, the nozzle. It still, it like, still seems to have a good seal and everything. A little bit of wear. I guess you expect that when you trash the bejesus out of it. My biggest gripe is that the rubber didn't stay adhered to the back. And that caused further failures further down the line. So had that rubber not failed, I don't think the piston would have failed because the standard Wells piston was actually quite good, uh, quite strong. And so had that piston not failed, the only failure, other than obviously breaking the front off of the gearbox, would have been the tapper plate return spring. So, I'd be interested in maybe just buying another one of these Wells boxes 
and radiusing the corners in this in this gearbox and seeing how much difference that makes although the hardness of this um, alloy let me just test it off camera sorry uh, not very hard I just put that dent into it really easily it's quite a deep deep dent as well like comparatively I did the same thing to the gear I don't know if you can see this but nowhere near as deep on the gear these gears aren't spectacular like that's probably a softer gear than uh, than a lot of the gears that I've played with um, but I, I don't think that's the Achilles heel of this box problem is uh, here just the stresses in this part and it is it is a pretty it's a pretty poor cast, let's be real. Um, so, put some comments in the, dis in, the, in the comment section there. If you think I should get another one of these, try radiusing the front of this thing, and then performing another torture test. Maybe. Let me know. Let me know what you think. Anyway, that's it from me. Thanks for watching. Peace.